now let us know what is an attitude what is an attitude in general terms can anybody can anybody say what is an attitude let's make this session as an interactive session so that you will be having more focus and you will be beneficial after this class do you have a, any idea about what is an attitude in a general term do you have any idea behavior yeah sometimes behavior and it is a view or a reaction to something on behalf of your own nature that is an attitude if something if you are having any opinion or if you are having any reaction towards a person or a thing then that is known as attitude in general for example what is your first reaction when you think of terrorism premarital sex demonetization linking of aadhar card Okay, what is the first reaction when you uh, listen about demonetization or linking Aadhaar card? Okay, let me ask you, what is your first reaction for pre-marital sex? What is your first reaction, Soumya? If I ask you, what is your opinion on pre-marital sex? Soumya, Janavi, in any one of you? Someone of you. Not good. Okay. So you you may have the feeling that okay, it is not good to uh, have premarital sex. And maybe Soumya may agree to that. But somebody mm, may have partial agreement, somebody will strongly agree, somebody strongly disagree, right? So, this first reaction of your agreement or your reaction towards a thing or a person, if you, if you, if I ask you, uh, what do you feel about Saumya? The first reaction when you see her or when you think of her, so that is the attitude that is generally termed as attitude in our social psychology. So, the reactions you give to the above words as termed as attitudes. Okay. So, in general terms, attitude can be of positive or negative attitude. So, if you have any positive um, overview or opinion on others, then it is called as positive attitude. And if you have any negative uh, reference to them in your opinion, then that is called as negative attitude. Okay. So now let us see what is a specific definition of an attitude according to our scientists. They say that Gordon Alford in 1935, he says that attitude as a mental or a neutral state of readiness organized through experience exerting a directive influence upon the individual's responses to all objects and situations with which it is related. In simple terms, it is opinion statements which signifies your likes and dislikes. Okay? Towards things, people's ideas, ideas and so on. So, this is the major definition of an attitude. In simple terms, we can say that our opinions on what we like, what we dislike, or what are our opinions, all those things comes under our attitude. Okay. So, there are mainly three components of a attitude. They are affect, behavioral, and cognitions. What is this effect? It is feelings or emotions that something evokes example fear sympathy hate all the 
things which affect our opinion or which affects our like or dislikes that is one of the component of our attitude for example janavi likes saumya because she she gets frightened if we don't like saumya she will give a fear or she will threaten you i will uh, uh, say bad words about you to other classmates or she will do all kind of blackmail things to you so your relationship and your behavior depends upon your fear factor right that is the effect so if the effect of fear or any some kind of emotions or feelings you attach to your attitude so that will be one of the component the next one is behavioral behavioral is tendency to act in a certain ways towards something this is generally observable component of attitudes for example people may tend to use beauty products to lessen their skin tone okay so if you are aligning your actions to your thoughts it is a behavior so when your thoughts comes in order to agree with your thought you do certain kind of behavior if you don't disagree with your opinion then you do different kind of action right so this is also one of the major component of the attitude the other one is cognition for example our ideas our beliefs our thoughts it will make some difference to the information whether it is accurate or whether it is real based on that we tend to have our attitude right if we are if we hear some rumors about one person we try to according to our belief if you are a good nature person then according to you you think okay uh, is this information real or accurate you try to understand and then only you try to behave in such some manner okay this also this type of thinking is called as cognition and the three major components are effect behavioral and cognition so these three are the major components you have to focus on so we have a triangular type of uh, for example um, if there is a attitude then you need to have a information component and you have to have emotional component to it and you have to have behavioral component component to it then a overall attitude is formed over a object right am i clear till this point yes ma'am okay now we will see how attitudes are formed how do you develop an attitude okay now we have three types three ways in which you can have attitude developing in yourself the first one is classical conditioning the other one is uh in instrumental co conditioning and the last one will be observational conditioning okay what is classical conditioning classical conditioning is when a stimulus that is capable of producing a positive response regularly precedes a second stimulus okay the first becomes a signal for the second okay for example we take um janavi is getting good marks always from her uh, academy uh, from her childhood she is scoring good marks in her she is uh, scoring good marks in her schooling college uh, every time so because of this all her parents relatives friends are continuously applauding her okay for getting 
good marks or getting top one rank in the school or getting some district scores like that. So this positive reward which their parents are giving. For example, many of our parents will be telling, if you get good score, I will buy you a cycle. If you get a good marks, I will do this or that. Okay. So this is the kind of classical conditioning. Okay. If you do this, if you get good marks, there is nothing related to buy skill. But if you link buy skill and your score, so if you get good marks, you will get some kind of reward. So this conditioning. So first will be the signal for the second one. Okay. For example, in the textbook, they have given, uh, for example, I am there. For every each and every exam I write, I buy a new pen. Okay. Even um, for my personal thing also, I will buy a new pen, new set of stationery for any of the exam, starting exam. So I think if I'm buying a new pen and I'm putting that before a god or a goddess, I feel I will write good in an exam and I will score good marks. So this is, is conditioned since many of the many of my exams. So it was repeatedly happening. If I'm buying a new pen, then I'm scoring good marks. So in this way, somewhere subconsciously, subconsciously you think only because of buying this pen, new pen, I'm scoring good. If one or other time uh, I don't have a chance to buy a new pen, then what happens? What happens? Can anyone of you tell? If for one instance, I was not able to buy a new pen, what might be my thinking process and what might be my attitude? I feel or something. I will fear. Yes. Right? I will fear. So because of my fear, I may not perform good in my exams. Right? So this is a classic example of a conditional classic conditioning example. Okay. So, in many advertisements also, uh, in the TV, we see many advertisements. They use classical conditioning. For example, uh, uh, tell me one ad. If I say uh, Kohli, what ad uh, reminds you? Head and shoulders. Head and shoulders. So, whenever you see Kohli, you remember head and shoulders, right? If I tell you, uh, for a, if you see a product Lux, Lux soap or some kind of soap, whom actress you uh, you remember? Some celebrity. Balakrishna. Ah, Balakrishna, Aishwarya Roy. I used to see Aishwarya Roy as a Lux ad. Okay. So, likewise, this is a classical conditioning. So, whenever you see a object or a person, you subconsciously, you don't think, say, okay, Virat, Virat Kohli, okay, I will remember him for a head and shoulders. Do you do that consciously? No. No. Subconsciously, when you see it repeated times, then you subconsciously remember and you correlate. So, whenever you go and see head and shoulders in the storeroom, in a supermarket, you see, oh, if Virat Kohli is your favorite actor, then you see, oh, okay, this is a product which is branded by Kohli, my favorite person. Okay, if he is doing that, okay, let me also buy this and try this. Okay, so this is a classic conditioning which many advertisement agents will perform. Okay, the next type of conditioning is instrumental conditioning. In this instrumental conditioning is another basic form of learning in which uh, responses that lead to positive outcomes that is instrumental in avoiding negative outcomes are strengthened. For example, a student studying regularly gets high scores, wins a prize, is appreciated by the parents which we discussed earlier 
he develops a positive attitude towards studying regularly okay when you hear the term drug okay if you are if anybody is telling uh what are drugs to you so uh, what do you feel about drugs what, what is your answer it's not a good habit okay it's not a good habit why are you saying it is not a good habit Because it is not good to use or give okay. all the habits. Okay. This is all you are selling, uh, telling me on this open platform. For example, you are a person who sometimes like to do adventure and sometimes you go to pub or some late night parties and there you have a habit of ha taking smoke, alcohol, you kind of take drugs, okay, all kind of things. But in a common platform like this, in a platform, uh, common platform like this, you will not openly tell that, okay, I like drugs. Sometimes I take weed. You cannot tell like that. Because you want to be safe. You want to have a, a good opinion. Uh, others should have good opinion on you. In order to do that, you will say certain things. Okay. So in order to avoid some negative outcomes, you will behave in such a way. Okay. So this is instrumental conditioning. Okay. So attitudes that are followed by positive outcomes will have more strength. And if you have negative outcomes, you will have weaker, uh, weaker attitudes towards that. So this is all about uh, one second. So, this is uh, what about the instrumental conditioning. And the third one is observational learning. Uh, observational learning, this term only will explain what is observational learning. Because all the time we see in the advertisement, constantly we see advertisements and we observe few things and we tend to do we tend to act in the same way as we observed. Okay. So, for example, uh, there is an advertisement in your community, in your apartments. For example, in your apartments, there was a, uh, there will be an exhibition going to be held in your apartments. Okay. Some uh, stalls will be installed in your apartment. Okay. Before that, before 10 days of your exhibition starts, they will give ads, okay? They will uh, display a screen wherein few, few of the stall owners, they will be displayed continuously. Though they are strangers, you observe them, okay? Daily uh, be beside your lift, there is a screen where they will give an advertisement for your uh, exhibition and regularly they will be displaying some stall's description, okay? So on the day of exhibition, you directly go to those stalls where you have seen regularly. Though they are strangers, you observe them for a quite period of time, you tend to have a familiarity with them. Though they are strangers, you find some familiar, uh, familiarity with them and you go and buy from their stalls. So people generally tend to go familiar people than to go strangers. Though they are strangers, if you are observing them for a quiet time, you find few familiarities and then you go and buy from them. So this is one of the examples which we can say observational learning is also one of the ways to develop our attitudes. Okay, is this clear till now? How attitudes are formed? Yes, ma'am. Okay, ma now let us be so quick so that we can finish this topic. So, attitude change persuasion. Okay, what is persuasion? If I want to sell a pen to you, okay, that pen is not good. But I will say, this pen is very good. If you buy this pen, you will be getting 100 out of 100 marks. Okay, I will tell all those positive things about the pen 
though it is not good, though it is, uh, I'm selling you this product for a very higher price, but it is not a good product. That is called fraud, right? Yes, ma'am. But fraud is different, persuasion is different. If I'm selling a pen and I'm telling you the exact qualities of it and I will tell you how it is benefited to you, okay, then that is called as persuasion. Persuasion is you are convincing all the good qualities of the thing which you are uh, telling to you. If you want to convince your father to go to a movie, are you doing fraud or are you doing persuasion? Persuasion. Persuasion, correct. Because persuasion is you are convincing for a betterment of your needs or if your qualities. So this is persuasion. So if you are persuading a person, your attitude will be different. If you are doing a fraud, your uh, your attitude will be different. So attitude will also change the persuasion. You can also measure the attitude. Okay. You can measure the attitude by different methods. Okay. The first method will be uh, Thurston's equal or appearing inter intervals method. Okay. This is one way of measuring method. And the other, met other method will be summated ratings. The other one will be semantic differential. Okay. So, there are different methods how you can measure. The last one will be social distance scale. Okay. Now, let us come from downwards. First, we will see what is social distance scale. How you measure your attitude with social distance scale. Okay. For example, for this, I will share my screen. Okay. I would like to share my screen. Can you see my screen? Yes, yes ma'am. Okay, now you can see my screen, right? So, now you see in the screen social distance scale. In this social distance scale, uh, please mute Soumya. Okay, thank you. So, in this social distance scale, you will rate according to your as uh, to your opinions, okay? If Americans are there, how you would rate them? For example, you will choose them as your spouse or you will have a personal relationship or you will agree them as a neighbors. You can agree them as a colleagues or you can agree them as a citizens or you can only agree them for visitors, okay? Uh, would exclude from my country. If you hate them, you will say, no American should come to my country. Okay. According to your opinion, you can just rate this scale. Okay. So, Chinese, English, French, African. Okay. For example, uh, Janavi is okay to marry a French person. Okay. If she is sticking to close kind of by marriage if she is taking a French person to get a marriage. So, this obviously says if you are marrying a person, you will obviously like them, right? And you can also bear them as your neighbor, as your colleague, or as a citizen, as a visitor, right? If you are selecting only, if Saumya is selecting a French person only as a visitor, then it is obvious that she don't like them only on and off basis, they can come and go, right? So, in this way, you can measure your attitude, you can measure your behavior, you can measure your opinion. So, this is one method of measuring attitude. The other method will be, it is semantic differential. Okay, now look at this. 
fair unfair valuable worthless good bad okay you have different parameters you have only three parameters if you want to uh, state any one okay for example if you think premar premarital sex okay if you want to measure this on your opinion we want to measure your attitude towards a premarital sex okay now janavi said it is not good okay so it she feels that it is unfair to have that so she will rate about 7 and she thinks it is worthless okay having premarital sex is worthless or she thinks okay some value is because we can assess a person before marriage only whether he is compatible to me or not okay she thinks this is a little more valuable okay it is unfair but it is okay valuable kind of thing so she'll rate four and coming to good or bad she thinks it is a bad okay she rated this as bad seven so her rating will be seven four and seven so how can you measure it it is a average of this you can have a mean value what is mean value you can sum it and divide it by two okay so this way you can measure your attitude this is also one method of measuring your attitude and let us see the next one are you with me That's yes Colin. okay the, uh, so the next one will be equal appearing intervals method in this you will have a set of questions okay a set of questions will be given for example if you give 11 set of statements that occupy position in a continuous order so for this 11 questions for first question you will give one the second question you will give two the third question you will give again one for fourth you will give again two the third will be third fourth will be two like that randomly you will rate from one to five okay at the end all the one the top rating ones you will keep on one side the all second rating second rank statements you will keep aside so in this way also you can measure your attitudes the next one will be methods of summative ratings in this also you have five different statements like can you see uh, here can you see my pointer one will be yes. strongly agree two will be agree three will be neither agree nor disagree fourth one will be disagree fifth one be, will be strongly agree if i say linking an aadhar card strongly disagree be... no. yes strongly disagree ma. strongly ah correct maybe it is a spelling uh, printing mistake strongly disagree okay so if i say linking an aadhar card is good for our government to have better administration okay I think, okay, neither agree nor disagree. I will select that option. Multiple options are there. I will select three. Third option. Saumya will select strongly agree. And Janavi may select disagree. And the other person, Rahul may select as strongly disagree. And Syed may select another option okay agree so when you see this you can directly measure with the simple one multiple options you can directly measure your attitude your behavior will change when you say you strongly agree right when you strongly agree your behavior is are always supporting to that if anybody you meet you say did you link your other card you will say Right? If the person who is strongly disagreeing it, then you say, you do so many protects. How? Why should we do? Why should we link our other card? It is stealing all our personal information. Right? So, in this way, you can uh, 
you can act in the way which your attitudes will give. Okay? Is this clear? Okay, I am stop sharing my screen. Is this clear? Is attitudes uh, all clear for you? Madam, once again, can you show? Pardon? What do you want me to do? Can you explain once again uh, this? Which one? Summited uh, rated? rated. Yes, okay. ma'am. Okay, I will do it. So, summit, summited ratings are the ratings which we give on multiple option based. Okay, for example, Aadhaar card is there. Do you, all, do you all have Aadhaar card? Yes. Many of you might have Aadhaar card. Okay, linking your Aadhaar card with bank account, with your PAN card, uh, with your passport, everything nowadays is linked to Aadhaar card. Okay. If you if you want to measure if I want to measure all of your attitude, okay, Janavi, Saumyas, Rahul, Sayas, everybody's attitude, what I do? I will just simply do a survey. I will give you a form saying that I will have multiple options, five multiple options. What is strongly agree, agree, neither agree. Not disagree. The fourth one will be disagree and the fifth one will be strongly disagree. Okay. So, I give this form to Soumya. She will select strongly agree. Janavi, she will select disagree. Sayed will select disagree. And Rahul will select strongly disagree. So, by this, with this simple act, I can measure your attitude. Right? Did you get my point? How? Yes, I will see Saumya and she uh, selected strongly agree. So I can assess her attitude. She will agree. So she said she is strongly agree. So her behavior will also will, depends upon this agreement. Right? She will support the government. She will do all campaigns against uh, towards uh, linking everybody to linking other card to their bank, pan, everything. Okay. So, by this, we can just say, we can measure the attitudes based on our rating systems. Okay. So, now is it clear? Yes, ma'am. Clear. Okay. Now, let us move on towards our next topic. That are theories of attitude. Theories of attitude. In this, we have different theories of attitude. So, let us quickly cover few of the important theories because we are running out of the time and we have a lot to cover. So, now, now let us discuss about Hyder's theory of balance. Okay, in this Hyder's theory of balance, again, I will have to share my screen so that I can explain better. Can you all see my screen? Please respond. Can you see my screen? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay, good. Okay, in this balancing theory, now we are... Uh, dealing with Hyder's theory of balance. Okay, he thinks balancing between a person, the other person and the object will be based on the likes and dislikes of one another and of some object or a person. Okay, this is how this theory explained. So, for example, we think this is all triangle based. Okay. You can see the picture, right? There are few triangles which says it is balance, 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 balance. And you have another picture where there is an imbalance, 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 imbalance. So, for example, 
if you take a triangle p o x okay for example p is like pradeep o is like um, what name shall we keep o can you suggest any name with o can anyone suggest a name with o olive olivia olivia no i'm saying textbook is okay can you tell me other name so p we kept as pradeep right some indian name i'm i'm thinking of um okay let's do it with olivia only okay and x will be dog dog is like a not human being right so x okay when you think pradeep and olivia likes dog both of them likes dog do you think they have balance in their emotions balance in their feelings and balance in their relationship yes yes so in the second diagram if you think pradeep likes olivia okay and pradeep don't like dog and olivia also like pradeep and olivia also don't like dogs do you think there is a balance between them yes yes ma'am yes and pradeep is uh not liking olivia and olivia is also not liking pradeep but they both like dog do you think there is also a balance between them don't like yeah. uh, they both don't like each other but they like dogs but do olivia have a common point like dogs no ma see you don't like dogs and i don't like dogs okay but we go on a walk every day we go to some park okay we go to some park and we see we are taking our two dogs and we are going you like dog i like dog but we don't know each other and we don't have any likes or dislikes is there any common point between you and me to build a relationship balanced to build a relationship no um, yes right no yes or no no ma'am no how um because we don't know each other na ma'am we don't know each other that is fine over a period of time if we both are going to the same park and we take our dogs when you see my dog you will feel oh the dog is so cute if you see my dog and you have the same feeling some kind we we can make the balance right so yes. in the next phase we can see in the next screens we see about imbalancing relationship for example pradeep will like olivia pradeep will like dog okay but olivia likes pradeep but she don't like dogs right is there a major gap between them yes. right to have a balance their common like and dislike is deflecting in this scenario okay that's why there is a imbalance between them here pradeep will is not liking olivia and he is liking dog but olivia is liking dog and not liking pradeep okay then also their imbalances will occur and in another situation pradeep and olivia like each other but they don't like dogs then also uh, olivia will like dog pradeep will not like dog the first scenario opposite where pradeep wants like dog and once they dislike so here this happens imbalance so he says this theory states that 
if a person or another person, if they have any balance between them or their likes or dislikes or having balances and the structures are stable. Okay. So this theory based upon the likes and dislikes and the structure formed by that. Okay. The next theory will be, and also he gave an example. My friend's friend is my friend. My friend's enemy is my friend. My enemy's friend is my enemy. And my enemy's enemy is my friend. In most of the movies, they send Shatru, Shatru, Namitru. Correct? Yes. Yeah. So, it is like your common likes and dislikes will have a balanced structure. Okay. So, now coming to next Cognitive Dissonance Theory by Festingers. So this says, I will quickly move towards the structure. Do you have structure to this? Okay. For example, this theory says, for example, Raj. Raj Singh thinks smoking causes cancer. Okay. But he smokes. Okay. So his thinking is different from his action. You're getting it? Raj thinks smoking causes cancer. But also he smokes. His thinking is different, but his actions are different. If he thinks, oh, it is causing cancer, it is very harmful to health, then what should he do? He should not smoke. But what he is doing? He is smoking. Instead of not smoking, he is smoking. So this, this disturbance, this conflict is called as dissonance. This theory explains the dissonance effect. Okay. Cognitional dissonance effect. So, why Raj is smoking, though he know it is harmful to his health, he will think some reasons he will give. Okay. Oh, somehow in my college days, somehow for fashion I smoked. But now, if I want to live leave smoking, if I want to quit smoking, I will gain my weight. All my mood will get disturbed. My hormones will get disturbed. I will become more stressful. He will find some reasons for him to smoke, though he thinks it is harmful. Okay. He will try to give reasons to, to support his behavior. By giving some reasons to his thinking, he will say, oh, if I am not, if I am stopping smoking, if I stop smoking, I will become obese, which in turn is also unhealthy, right? So, in that way, he will give strong reasons to his thoughts, but not to his behavior. Then, the dissonance, see, the dissonance will be weak. When he give weak reasons, if he don't have much reasons to support his thinking, then his attitude will be strong. His dissonance will be strong. Okay. So this is the theory of dissonance. Cognitive dissonance. Okay. The, uh, so the next one will be Self-perspective theory that we will... Okay. For example, self-perspective. Everybody will have a kind of perspective towards one object or for one thing or a person. I will have one opinion. You might have one opinion. I will think, for example, if I want to work in an organization, for example, I want to work in some xyz organization they will pay me very less okay they will give me only one rupee per day if i am working there and in this other company they are charging you 20 rupees 
for some other work. So my opinion, my perception will be differ different. I want to work in a psychology related background. But the other, though it is paying high, it is out of my subject. So my preference will be different. Okay, it is all dependent upon my perception, self-perception. Okay, so there are many experiments based on this and they have come arrived uh, to this. They are explaining this by a forced compliance dissonance. There is also a forced compliance. For example, uh, if kids are there, they want to, uh, pay, mom want to uh, make them drink milk. Okay, so what she will say, if you drink milk, I will give you a chocolate, right? In order to get the chocolate, what should the child do? Child has to drink. Will drink milk. Drink milk. Is this a forced complaint or the child is doing out of his will? It is a forced complaint because... Mom is forcing child to do a act which the child is not liking. So this is a forced compliance. Okay. So, uh, I said the experiment. Uh, for example, according to self perception theory, why was there is a difference between the one dollar and twenty dollar group? Okay, and they have also explained with a uh, two group of people who are working for free and who are working for some amount of money. Okay. They see who are working for free. If I say, you people, you students now who are listening to my class, you come to my uh, company and work for free. I will give uh, work like uh, loading my books from the shop. You have to get those books to my home and you have to deliver uh, my set of papers to different schools and colleges for free. I will not pay you anything. There, your interest and your perception will be different. If I say you come, if you give my papers to different colleges, I will pay you $1 per paper. And for another work, if you carry my books to another colleges, there I will give you $20. Right? So, where you will be more, tend to have more interest, where I am paying you high. Right? So, in this way also, you can see the perspective changes and your attitude changes from this theory. Okay? The next theory will be theory of reactance. Okay, this is one of the important theory which you need to focus on. So, after this theory, we will just discuss about the model question paper. Uh, the last time some of you have asked about uh, how will be the question paper and how to uh, we need to assess how to prepare for the examination, right? In this theory of Reactance, people's needs for control. Okay. In this, they think people, generally people, will tend to have the limited editions. Whichever you say, it is limited. Then you will tend to develop interest towards that limited ones. Okay. For example, Every day, uh, you might have known there is a sale. Okay, 50% off, 20% off. But this offer is only valid for two days. Though you, are, you have requirement or you don't have any requirement, you will develop some kind of interest towards going to that mall. Because there is only limited offer. Only two days are there. So, we have to go and grab the opportunity. So, whichever is limited, you develop interest and you will do your actions, your attitudes towards that. Okay. If one mall is saying, you have all offers 365 days. 
do you show any interest to go there? As you have shown interest to the limited offer for only two days. In general, which which option has more number of people? Two days limited. Man. Two days. Because there is limited. You will see. Okay, limited. Okay, there is a scarcity. Okay, after two days, you don't find those offers. So, for an, another example, if somebody says, you should have freedom for only one day. Okay, and from the next day, you will have to sit in your home, like lockdown. Okay, if you say, for example, we all have seen lockdowns, right? So there we felt our freedom is gone, right? How many of you felt that our freedom is gone in the lock lockdown days? No, you, you did not feel that your freedom is gone? Yes, ma'am. Yes, gone, ma'am. Gone, right? What? Uh, boys are just quiet. They are not reacting to the class. Questions. Calm. <laughs> Usually, boys make a lot of noise. In this case, only girls are making noise. Good, good, girls. Keep it up. So, we feel whenever there is a threat to our freedom, we tend to fight. Right? You tend to fight. If you are logged, if you are logged, you will say, no, no, I want freedom. For example, voting is there. Okay, you will, every now and then, every five years, there is voting happening. Okay, so what is vote percentage? Vote percentage usually will be less. Okay, for urban areas, compared to rural areas, the urbanized people will go for voting little lesser percentage. But when you say, in this elections, in this particular 2024 elections, or all urban people who are staying in metropolitan cities, people's right to vote is removed. Okay. Metropolitan cities, people, anyway, they will vote percentage is less. But when they say, when government says, you should not vote, then everybody will start becoming conscious and everybody will start fighting. No, I my how can you take my general freedom? How can you take my rights away? Right? So, this is reactance theory. Okay? Here, when people people will have control over their freedom of choice or action, then the people desire to preserve them as many options as possible. They will improve it. For example, I will give you three chances. Okay? I will give you continental breakfast. And I will give you South Indian breakfast. I will give you North Indian breakfast. Most of you from coming from the South Indian background, you will give more marks towards South Indian. You will give five to five marks for South Indian, three marks for uh, three points for uh, North Indian, and you will give one point for a uh, continental because you all may not like uh, bread jam and some continental dishes like cakes, muffins, all those things in a corn, cornflakes, all those things in a breakfast. But when I see most of you, most of you in the class are opting only for the South Indian breakfast. Then I will say, then I will say, okay, nobody are liking continental. So I will remove continental from the breakfast menu. I will say and I will say, okay, I will remove this option. Then some of you will think, oh, why should, that is breakfast buffet is free, right? So why should I not use that option? Why should they remove it? Then after hearing this, some might of you give more points towards continental also. If you think that is removed from your thing, you will say, why necessarily go waste, unnecessarily go waste? You will have that option also. Some days we will eat that also in our breakfast. So this is reactance theory. Okay. This is like reactance theory. Did you understood this? See. Yes, Can you see this picture? Reactance. Importance of freedom. Magnet 
magnitude of threat or freedom mental effects like this reactance will give you judgmental changes and this also will give you behavioral effects also when your freedom and your freedom is in threat then your behavioral judgments will be different and your behavior will be different okay this is a reactance theory okay is this clear yes ma'am okay now we have yes, left with one or two minutes there do you want me to take model paper now or uh, shall we do it in the next session next session okay okay we okay we will do in the next session only one minute left right so i don't want to go in rush so ma'am in next session is the, they have given the dates 10th and 11th we have both ma'am no it is on 11th only on 11th ma'am yeah on sunday 11th is yeah. sunday right Yes, ma'am. But in the schedule, the uh, two dates are given. Ma'am, ten ten. That is maybe uh, Telugu medium, English medium. I don't know. But my session. No, ma'am. For us only. Okay, okay. But I guess it's second Saturday or something. Might be. So for me, the schedule it is on eleventh. Okay. okay. On eleventh, uh, we will uh, only one session is left for us. Yes. We have covered uh, how many units we have covered? January. I really appreciate your effort of joining regular sessions. So we have finished unit one, unit two, unit three, unit four, and in unit five. Five, six, five six, we didn't do. Okay, five, five we didn't do. Unit six we have covered. Unit seven we have covered. Unit eight we have covered. Eight. So totally eight units we have covered um, in middle fifth unit we did not cover okay out of eight we have covered seven units and in the next session only one session is left we will go through all important topics i will just summarize uh, the other uh, units important topics and i will discuss model paper in the last session okay okay ma'am okay prepare okay, well all the best have a nice day all of you thank you ma'am Thank you, ma'am. Have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, bye. bye ma'am.